um, and of course on, on the weather coast where the renegade uh, militant um, Harold Keke and, and his GLF um, were continuing to, to, to fight um, government. Keke is always out of the picture, he's always out of all the, all the you know, effort to try and bring peace back along, along Solomon Islands. Harold Keke's group, or that they came, uh, uh, everything bought and they ran away the weather coast. And then they started another conflict, which is more internal within people or weather coast Seleva. And he'd moved his centre of operations down to the weather coast. And he was being hunted, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right word, uh, by other groups um, who were trying to dismantle his group. Keke and Kawa used the system of using family to kill family mm -hmm. to test um, loyalty to themselves. If Keke ordered somebody to murder somebody and it was his brother, the person did it. Mm. Um, otherwise, they would have died themselves. So it was uh, just tragic, absolutely tragic. But it was a way of testing loyalty. Yeah, it was uh, Pitay Beach yeah. incident. He felt that uh, some of the boys were being disloyal, so he brought them down and sat them round in prayer because they all closed their eyes and started praying. And he walked up to one of his relatives and shot him in the head and then said, I've spilled my blood, you spill yours. And then got brother to kill brother or cousin to kill cousin to prove loyalty. Eleven boys died there. Yeah. Yeah. During the tension period, or 2003, it was just before we got here, there was a problem down the weather coast. Harold Keke was then leader of the Guadalcanal Liberation Front, the GLF. Um, Brother Sardo had been a friend of the GLF in that he was allowed to go in there and pray with them. Uh, Brother Sardo started asking the wrong questions and talking to the boys, asking about what they were doing, their operations, their numbers, numbers of weapons, all the wrong questions for a brother to be asking. He's also the nephew of Sir Alan Kamakiza from Salvo Island. So he had that link to politics. So all these suspicions grew. He was told by uh, Ronnie Cower that uh, if he tried to escape, he'd be killed. Otherwise, he'd be uh, just kept there as a prisoner. He tried to escape twice. And so they beat him to death. Some time later, a few months later, he hadn't turned up, so the brothers became worried about him. So uh, the assistant head brother and five other brothers decided to go looking for him. Ronnie Cowell and his boys met them there and challenged them. Um, they refused to um, stop and be checked by them. Um, so three of them were shot and killed there. Uh, three were taken hostage. The three of them were uh, led down to uh, pre-dug graves and uh, they were shot uh, into a grave. And one of the boys, a uh, boy called Billy Kelly, Kelly was 14, and he was handed an SLR and told to shoot one of the brothers. Um, he knew that if he didn't, he was dead, so he did. So it was obvious that uh, we needed foreign intervention. And when Sir Alan um, agreed and invited uh, Ramsey to come in, that was the only option open to Solomon Islands. I went down to Canberra myself uh, to, uh, to see the Australian Prime Minister, who was John Howard then. And we had a meeting at the lodge, um, uh, Sir Alan and myself and our senior advisers, and we went over it all and we made it clear that we could only go in if it was a broadly based mission. That obviously uh, there are security issues and there are economic issues and um, uh, both have to be considered. And because the request came yet again, 
I had developed the view um, in the lead up to our decision that we had probably made the wrong decision earlier. John this time around um, changed his mind. Provided other countries were involved, and that was the key to its success, nobody could say it was a bit of old fashioned colonialism. It was a very broadly based mission. Obviously, New Zealand made a big contribution, but you had Fiji and you had uh, Papua New Guinea, you had Vanuatu and, and so on. So there was, it was quite a broadly based effort. Australia said, we're going to come and help you, but we're not going to come alone, which was the right thing to do because they were smart. They didn't want to get burnt. They made sure that the rest of the region were standing in with them. I feel relieved uh, because something is something positive is coming to unrest this uh, situation in, in, in my country, yes. On the eve of the deployment of Ramsey, there was a, an influential paper published by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute um, called Our Failing Neighbour, um, which very much presented this sort of portrayal of, of the conflict in, in Solomon Islands. Um, it was caused by state failure um, and, and, and Australia simply couldn't afford to have a failed state um, sitting on its doorstep. The idea that we might have a failed state uh, uh, on our hands and in our neighbourhood, particularly given Australia's strength, was, was the fact that it was there. And when you think you might have a failed state, then uh, you allow your mind to roam at large as to what the consequences would be. The way to arrive uh, was uh, with a very visible uh, military uh, deployment that would get people's attention, and that worked. Time is sorry that Ramsey had me come. Me no one will face woman from where the coast me go with low head on your pot. Because me, me long too much for looking this for something and finish ya. This for tension ya. Or the killings and all the rapings and all the stealings and all this. He must stop. So that me fall must stop long good. Or same before. It will happen to us. It will happen. Said, oh God, if I'm pressing me for certain people come for help me, fella. Because me fella looking, me fella lose him stuck of people. Lose him life, lose him belongings. If I fella go through a hard life for him. Uh, it was a very big intervention, but to, for those things to work, you've got, you've got to do it properly. You can't do them in half measures. And we not only needed lots of military personnel, but also lots of police. And we needed uh, public servants who were skilled in economics, accounting, governance, law and order, all of those things. Paul Simon, my military advisor and a couple of others, had flown in uh, about a week or so earlier to have a very quiet meeting with the Prime Minister, with Kemi uh, just to uh, get a sense of, uh, of his views about the, uh, the process that we're about to embark on and so that he fully understand where we were coming from, what our objectives were, what our approach was going to be, how we were going to take this forward uh, and the fact that this was, had to be uh, a very close partnership. Uh, the future of the country is, uh, is very important. So though um, my life and that of uh, the life of my family uh, at risk. And uh, if I could achieve during my time of leadership uh, by calling um, Ramsey to come to help us out, uh, it's the right thing to do. I feel um, I achieved something, yeah. The joy of the locals uh, and the gratitude of the locals as expressed uh, in those hundreds of cheering people and those happy uh, little faces was terrific. I mean, it was one of the nicest experiences that I had for many years. Uh, you felt you'd really done something good. 
for a country that you had an obligation to help and the locals were saying thank you that's good it means that you're making progress and you're being a good regional neighbor and you can see that when Ramsey goes to the other parts of the country they uh, children and women and uh, everybody feel happy that the environment that Ramsey would provide is free for them to move and uh, do their daily business and work. Just deploying this, uh, this vast force, 1,800 troops, 300 police and a whole bunch of civilians, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a very busy time. We had set ourselves very, very clear, a clear set of objectives of what it was that we wanted to achieve. Whether it was deserved or not, um, Harold Kecky had come to symbolise everything that was, that was wrong about the current state within the Solomon Islands. We needed Harold to surrender his firearms so that if we were ever to get a sort of a knock-on effect, so then the other militia groups would actually uh, surrender theirs. So I think having been down in that part of Guadalcanal in a very, very sort of isolated way, I think there was a, a real sense of curiosity from Harold about what was Ramsey, who were we, um, what was going to be different and that was one of our key messages right from the start was that the status quo was no longer going to be an option. Ultimately, yeah, curiosity got to uh, Harold and he, he did want to actually talk to us and we then had uh, a series of meetings in a, uh, you know, in, in, in a little chapel which was the place of Harold's choosing. Ben uh, told him that uh, he, would, uh, he would be arrested uh, for essentially quite a, a minor, minor crime. And I pulled the warrant out and I read it to Harold at one of these negotiations in front of the altar and told Harold that this warrant commanded me to bring him before the court. And so ultimately uh, this mass murderer was arrested for failing to attend court to answer a charge of stealing a motor. Whether Harold really understood what he was doing, uh, I don't know, but he certainly did it uh, voluntarily, and in a sense, he did it, uh, did it happily. Why, why, did, why did Keke decide to surrender himself to us to arrest just three weeks after we arrived? I think he wanted his time in court to explain why he had taken the actions that he had taken. And we did provide him with, uh, with that opportunity, but I think for him, that was, uh, that was truly important. The so-called ex-militants, both sides, were willing to work with the Ramsey, especially in the disarmament area. They uh, dismantled the power structure of uh, Harold Keke. Guns were returned. And when that happened, it was easy for Malaitans to return their guns as well. The first impact they made and the first success story of the Ramsey intervention was the retrieval of weapons. The first key objective of the operation was to restore law and order. Uh, the detention of uh, Harold Keke and some of his key lieutenants was a key part of that. The other key part of that was to get the guns out of the society, particularly the high-powered military-style weapons that had been stolen from, uh, from armories. Paul Tavoa, who did just an outstanding job, and uh, his group, the National Peace Council, in collecting the guns and getting the message out, we took the decision to actually destroy the farm.